Yeah, yeah, this will be fun to see. Uh, at 7 p.m., we'll see the match begin. I have an opportunity to spectate um, fellow uh, competitors in Group Dingo. So, um, but yeah, this seems like a fun alternative to nobody casting it, so why not? See if I can find ideas or words or something. But in the interim, let's uh, watch a couple players here. And having just played the three-minute um, tournament, this is a very different pace of game. So, I was just going to comment, if you have su a match, if you've amassed such an enormous lead, and there's only about 20 tiles left to be played, that's an opportunity to spend your time to uh, come up with the best play. Or at least to come up with a play that you know is going to win the game. Um, if you've got the lead already. Um, otherwise you're always just looking for the best play, but... Uh, yeah, if you've got the lead, you can actually determine whether or not... Um, you can close off whatever opportunities may be available for your opponent and their bingo ideas or their ideas of playing a Q or a Z or an X or something like that. Um, and if you're really experienced, you can block a lot of other stuff, but yeah. Oh. Uh, perhaps I should take this opportunity to experiment a bit with, um, uh, I was going to make a user style to help highlight the last move. And uh, it's a bit inspired by what I think I'd seen um, in the Woogles Discord. And the thing that concerned me about this style is just, this seemed a bit too bold. Even if I try to take the color back a bit so it's not like purple and white, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what color would be appropriate so it doesn't stand out too much. This is just a little too stark, and I don't know what to do about it. Uh, if I try to mellow it a bit, um, then we get something like this, and it's not so easy to read the letters in this case. Um, wait, okay, so the tile color is CFB7D1, um, which is very high in red and blue, and not so high in green. So if I want something that stands out, but isn't necessarily super bright, I would want something that, ugh, that doesn't look so good. Uh, yeah, alternatively, something like this could maybe work, but 
the more I shift it away from... Um, yeah, I don't know how to make this stand out without it being too ugly. Yeah, pure white clearly doesn't work so well. Alternatively, perhaps the tile color itself should be changed. Oh, that's the border. Never mind. What's Where's the oh, background color? 6B, 26, 8B. Uh, maybe this shouldn't be 6B, 26. Maybe this should be 6B, 66. Or, no, it's too gray. doesn't really stand out that way anymore. But yeah, I took the light uh, tile color and tried to borrow it for this kind of highlighting. But I think it's a bit too stark. Uh, it's, it's still too bright, the lettering. Oh, maybe that's fine. Yeah, I think this is legible. It's very obvious where the last play is. And that's what I was aiming for here. Um, Alright, so... In 10 minutes, we'll see round three. Um, in the interim, let's watch another game. Honestly, I should not be the UX designer. <laughs> it would be better if somehow... Um, the Woogles uh, UX designers could come up with something here. Um, and also, I wonder... So, I've changed this, so... It... Um, okay, I was just reading some event that happened a while ago while I was playing. Um, so... Yeah, I've made a style that hides all the point values off the tiles because I assume that you all know like a Q is 10, a Z is 10, an X is 8, a K is 5, etc. I think you know that. Um, so there's really no point in my showing it to you. Um, really what you care about is how much the plays scored for and you can see that um, in the upper right corner, here's the move list and how many points each move scored. Um, hmm. I wonder. Hmm. So yeah, we can see at the bottom corner of the screen, uh, the player scores. I'm still trying to think if there's a better way to indicate play score, player score, etc. Because um, a lot of space is consumed by the way this is laid out. Like if you were to record on a tournament score sheet, you would just keep track of the running score. Uh, and if you had time, you record the words too. But. Um, And if you have even more, well, yeah, at some point you record letters, words, but also uh, just keep a running game total. And some players are really good at the math to figure out how many points um, a individual play does score. Um, so, yeah, traditionally, just in casual games, I would just write down the old score and then the new score and not even bother like with the addition operation and the play score in between. Um, but yeah, somewhere we need to indicate the number of points that the last play is worth. And um, it doesn't hurt to see the rack there too. There's just a lot of information there that takes space. I guess what I'm having a grudge with is just that I have a 720p layout because people can watch this in 720p and that the clock does not completely fit. Oh. Huh. 
Lol. Uh. Alright, so we got this going on, but Extra Typo's got a fun little activity. I forgot he was going to do that. Um, but, nevertheless, it's probably best to like, continue my thing. Wait, is SI really valid? I could swear that I've played SI before. Oh, yes, of course it is. Today during my games, I... I was not confident in SI. That's a really good one to know. Because S is a really powerful tile. Yeah, I have to admit some amusement at seeing or learning that, yes, the daily challenges are something, uh, the daily challenges on Aerolith are something worth doing for beginners. But then they also mention that the twos on Aerolith, the daily challenge, is not something really worth doing. And that didn't make sense to me. It seems to me a player should want to do that one. Um, even if it's not the best way to learn the words. I mean, yeah, the best way I've heard is to just read a word list. And that way, you're just supposed to know it and remember it, and you'll always get it right. To me, that didn't quite make sense. Um, but, yeah, so one method that's extraordinarily popular is read the word list and play the words and games, and just make sure that uh, you get these words right. Um, so, another... Oh, what was I thinking? I was thinking, well, the word wall does test whether or not you got it right. Um, and the daily challenge is always going to present enough words for you to have something to... Um, at least until you have solidified it. So, yeah, to me, it, the interface is just a little not geared toward the rank beginner. Um, that's okay. Um, yeah, let's watch one more game before a tournament starts. Assuming it starts on time. We've got three minutes. All right, and unfortunately, yep, that's another timeout. I mean, you'll take it. You kind of have to. It reminds me on Leech Us, some players will try to claim that when they time out, that they deserve a draw that they might have been able to earn had they not run out of time. That's complicated, but not that complicated. Um, I don't know, should we take another look at details on the tournament? The tournament in question is Coco World Blitz Scramble Championship from the Collins Coalition. Um, so, yeah, we got all the structure, your group dingo. Um, and what we're about to witness is Dorothy Okach versus, uh, Martin DeMello.
Uh, so yeah, that'll be exciting. Um, each of these groups are named after an animal. Uh, yeah. So what do we have? You can find your pairings. Yeah, thankfully they've linked the main lobby to the tournament page. I'm sorry, the pairings. I'm misspeaking. Thankfully, you can navigate from the main lobby directly to the Blitzchamps room on Woogles and not have to navigate through like three different links on the site to get there. And then that room will link to these instructions, etc. Uh, and yes, as part of a match, you need to play all the games. Even if the match has already been decided, spread will matter for in terms of who advances uh, when the top two of a group advance to the next phase of the tournament. Um, so yeah, you go to the tournament room. In the event of a tie, uh, nine games, uh, play a tenth game. And who wins if a player times out? Well, this is Blitz. This is how it goes. Um, yeah. So manage your time wisely. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So, if a player loses connection, try to reconnect. Woogles does automatically adjudicate games. Um, if the player does not reconnect, email the directors, etc. And yeah, the top two players will advance. Here's the rating list. Um, this morning I had been playing... Oh boy. Oh boy, boy, boy. Goodness. Um, it's been quite a week. And we'll find our opponent's name in here and certainly recognize it. Yeah, Mark, Mark Francis rated 1,500. So, yeah, that's, that uh, was always expected to be a very difficult match. Um, so, yeah, here's us at 65th place with the, uh, without a rating, basically. Now let's go back to the tournament room, see if games have started. See uh, what's going on. All right, they say hello. You say hi. I say hello. Oh. All right, looks like possibly, um, all right, yeah, this match will just get delayed for a half hour. That's cool, I guess. Um, yeah. We could take a look at recent games. So is this a listing of games in the same tournament room that have recently been played? Okay, yes it is. And this includes my own games. Uh, interesting. And we can click. We can continue clicking the next button, etc. There. All right. Um, oh, there's yeah. Keyboard shortcuts for Blitz for the curious. Um, yeah. And there's the recent games tab. So I need to take a look at some of these for like exchanging, don't I? Because I tried to do this the other week, and it went poorly. Huh. So, yeah. Dollar is exchange all. I wonder. Wait, is there ever use for that? That's strange. I mean, okay, you can't really think of a way to automate exchange. I don't know. We'll have to tinker with the dialogue at some point. Presumably when playing Hasty Bot in some really slow game where we have time to make sure we're doing it right. Um, simultaneous games. So in the lobby, go back to the lobby. On the new tab, on the play tab, you'll find a button. Resume your game with the opponent. Click ignore, and you can start more games. Uh, however, uh, game timers will continue to run, etc. Um, wait, what's this? Tapped browsing. 
Try these to find out which keys your browser supports. Oh. Okay, whatever. And then there's the Telestrator. Uh, for now, it's a hidden feature because they're still working on maturing it a bit. Um, it is possible with uh, a user script or just a script you run on the console. You can turn on the Telestrator and start drawing on the board. Um, yeah, I'm just afraid if I try to do this sort of thing, I'm likely to break stuff, so. That's cool, though. So, for example, every command begins with a zero. Toggle drawing on or off. Let's say you want to draw some stuff during your game while streaming. After enabling all stuff on board, above, type in zero, zero in your board to enable the Telestrator. You only have to turn it or type it in once to enable Telestrator. If you want to draw a line, use zero B in the right mouse button. Zero U undoes the last line. Zero E. Wow. This seems like the sort of stuff I'd need to like print out on a cheat sheet to get it right. <laughs> you only need to do local storage stuff above once per web browser. Um, yeah. Oh, you could see a video. Well, that is really clever. Um, have to check that out sometime. You can draw shapes too, which is experimental. Yeah, be careful with that one. If you want to play with an English common word lexicon. Oh. Okay. Well, now I'm curious. Um. Yeah. You must also have all lexicons enabled. Now you can play with a very small dictionary of only common words, subject to change at any time as we experiment with it. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I wonder, at some point I could try that against Tastybot and maybe not suffer as poorly. But then I have to remember which words were considered extremely common. That's cool, though. Um, hmm. uh, so, yeah. Uh, should we watch a different game? I suppose we should. So, um, yeah, we covered, like, here's the entrance list. Here's our group. I've played Conrad, I've played Evans, and today I played um, Mark here. So, I'm a third of the way through here. I think the way the pairings start off, it's 1 versus 10. The next round, it's 1 versus 9, and then 1 versus 8, and 1 versus 7, etc. And then round 1, it's 2 versus 9, and 2 versus 10, 2 versus 8, etc. I think. I think this is how round robins go. I haven't looked too very closely, but I think that's a common pattern for round robins and it tends to culminate in the final round being seed one and two facing off against each other i could be mistaken uh yeah i don't know should i continue delaying for another 20 minutes in case a game does occur i mean i want to check out the game but that doesn't really require me to live stream it um On the other hand, if I do live stream my attempt at coverage of the game, um, I'm more likely to get people communicating about the game with me. Wait, what is Greba? Huh. Always got new words to learn. Also, I need to work on some common uh, sevens and or high probability seven, high probability eight plays, especially ones that end in certain letters. 
Well, actually, I'm not sure that ending in a certain letter matters. I mean, yes, opponents are unlikely to just leave an E hanging in a lane. And even if they do, E is probably not the first or last letter of a common word. Uh, even though E is a high probability tile. I do believe the G, two letters in this game, the I and the G, tend to heavily influence the shape of the board, I think. One, because the uh, there's just so many I's in the bag. And two, I-N-G um, is such a strong suffix that um, players will go out of their way to try to avoid a lot setting something up for their opponent. And so you'll see G... Um, I mean, yeah... Sometimes it will appear, and players will try not to make it the last letter of the word inside of an open column or row. But also, um, since G is not the easiest letter to use, um, you will see it getting dumped, I guess. I don't know. Like here, this player had, well, there was not room for a bingo on the board anymore anyway. Anywhere that you could fit seven letters would collide into oh. another letter. But yeah, seeing L-I-N-T-Y get played um, indicates that I-N-G is not some concern anymore. Because there's not going to be a bingo. Oh. This is how you use an S to build two words at once. I've had family members tell me that that's not legal to build two words at the same time. Um, then we read the rules and found out that it was. <coughs> but they still didn't like us doing it, so... Um, yeah, it's not something we commonly did. Not that we had much of the world knowledge to exploit it anyway. Can you imagine, though, a form of this game where you can only build one word at a time, where you only get credit for your highest scoring word in a given play? That would be interesting. Okay, what? What is this word? Pilgular. I assume that means, like, pill-shaped? So the other thing I could take a look into doing... Oh, like a pill you'll... A small pill. The other thing I could consider doing... Uh, would be... Augment um, the bot that I'm calling Wordsmith um, by Danielle Barker. I could augment that to have a way to determine or detect which players are playing in this game category or streaming in it. And that way, when it comes time for me to figure out who to host or who to raid, I can pick a target that um, I could figure out how to spell their name and conveniently hand us over there. Uh, but that's probably not a trivial endeavor. And I'm not super interested in writing code at the moment right now. Not for... Um, uh, There's one thing to know that people really liked using the bot. Um even when predictions were active. Um, 
And it was great to be able to um, make anagram, um, make the anagram command perform as well as the other commands. Virtu, a love or taste for fine arts. Also virtu. I like this also part at the end. It's useful. Um, but yeah, I could take a look into something that would recommend a player um, to raid next. I wouldn't... I forget... <clears throat> I forget if I'd be required to release the source code or not if I were to make such a change to the bot. I don't think it would be required, so I could make um, the bot implement um, raid recommendation however I cared to have that implemented. Um, ideally, you would have parameters like this player um, only uses legally licensed music, or this player um, uh, has quality options, or uh, has a very large board in their screenshot. Things like that could be interesting. Knee dated. Oh, what? Who invents these words? We have to know what they all mean. Otherwise, we can't remember them all. Oh, wow. Well, you learn something new every day. I wonder why, <clears throat> I mean, words generally have etymology um, explaining how that word came to be. And so some of the words have um, roots that go back to Latin or Greek or other language backgrounds or languages, historical or present. Um, so, yeah, when somebody plays knee dated, um, this uh, comes from the verb knee date, um, I'm just wondering where does, what's the etymology of that word? Hmm. So we see four vowels. And among those four vowels, two are duplicated. Um, that is, the A is duplicated and the I is duplicated. Also, we have a J. So we'd like to play Jin. Um, oh, that's clever. But if we'd seen our opponent's rack, perhaps we wouldn't have done that. Because they've not drawn the best combination of letters either and are highly reliant on a vowel being present. Now, last I checked, there's no two-letter word that ends in a Z. Um, but there's always time to make one up. If you could <laughs> invent a word ending in a high-scoring letter, what would that word be and why? Okay, wow. That's a good vowel dump. Um, yeah, I think the study guide on crosstables.com includes um, vowel dumps, which I think include this one. Jeez, I am out of my element here. Polar. 
Is that like a golfer? Edgy. All right, so incidentally, this rack is... Oh, I'm sorry, when I'm spectating, even in spectation mode, it does order the rack by um, highest scoring tile first. That's cool. So I could look at a game my way. You could look at it your way if you're watching the game through the website. And um, we could each find it easier to find words our own ways. Welcome. Yep. Remorse. That's a good one. Also tremors. But, um... It looks like both of them will fit. Uh, and they're just considering as they're perhaps a better play? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think the most important thing to block, since there are 22 tiles in the bag, and that includes three S's. Now you don't know if, I'm sorry, the tiles in the bag doesn't necessarily include the S, but there are 29 oh. unseen tiles. So I would have thought that blocking the center triple word score would have been much more important than scoring a few points, well, scoring nine points from the P. Oh. Then actually, I think Tremors would have scored better anyway. As Remorse might have done also. <laughs> when you know none of the words on the screen. I know, right? How do people play this? Yeah, okay. I would have... Um, well... Thankfully, this can help settle it, um, but no, you're probably right then. Otherwise, we would have seen a play go down much faster. Yeah. That, that's probably the deal here. Okay. And now, I'm wondering what kind of word does not accept an S? Yeah, that kind of word does not accept an S. That's what I thought. Okay. Huh. But yeah, welcome. And yeah, I'm earlier this morning, I had played my round three game in the round robin open part of this. Or round three match. Each match is nine games and so forth. Um, so it's a nine round round robin followed by in each section the top two advance and play in a championship um yeah oh are we gonna see a challenge so the rule here is indicated in the upper right is double challenge that's different than the tournament rule this is just a fun game um but yeah, double challenge means if your challenge of that play is wrong, you lose your turn. Uh, there's no challenge. Uh, so two invalid plays have been allowed to stand. Um, yeah. There's a strange rule for Scrabble to allow non-existent words to be played on the board until it's discovered by a player who could have lost his turn. Huh. Um. Are you suggesting that it's okay to put the tiles on the board as long as you don't hit the clock? Like, what's the distinction? Okay. 
Also, online, it's easy to make typos. And while... Uh, one, yeah, the tournament I was playing in is a Blitz tournament, so... Typos are fairly common among amateurs. Um, yeah, let's go back to the tournament room. This might take a few minutes for them to get the game started. Alright, so we still have... The tournament game room, uh, tournament chat, etc. Yes, yeah, so in the board game version, if a player starts putting down the tiles and has made a mistake, and I mean, they, um, they get to take it back and fix it as long as they haven't hit the clock. Uh, it's really hard to prevent. Like, if a player were to, as they're laying the tiles on the board, they could accidentally drop one and could end up on the wrong square. I mean, nobody's going to call foul on that. Or imagine if they could. Just, you play a foul play, game over for you. And then you never get invited back ever again. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I think over the board, certainly, it's hard to prevent. The curious thing online is that if you've played an invalid word, um, you can see what your next tiles might have been out of the bag. So, I have yet to see an example where this makes sense. But theoretically, you could just play all your tiles anywhere in some random combination just to see what letters are actually remaining in the bag. And then you have some idea of what letters um, your opponent has. Never seen a case where that makes sense to do, because losing an entire turn is a bad thing. Um, and if you did this with like some sort of malicious intent, I don't know if you'd ever get invited back to a tournament. I don't know. So, yeah, anyway, this tournament I'm playing in, um, well, there's a lot of competitive Scrabble tournament players who are showing up for this. Uh, not just in the U.S. either. Um, I've played once, at least, maybe more than once, at a local club at college. And um, folks there are pretty encouraging. I think I got to play in a tournament, I think... Um, as far as tournaments go, it's not the largest affair ever. But yeah, I've had some experience playing with the actual board and clock and keeping score and stuff. And they were kind enough to give us, here's the list of two and three letter words in the U.S. Dictionary. Um, so... For this tournament, um, yeah, in the first two rounds, uh, each match I had a 0 and 9 score. Today I managed to win some games on time. Um, yeah, again, everybody in this tournament is super strong, so any win um, is a massive achievement. Um, but, yeah. It'll be interesting to see which players advance on after the round robin has ended. We thought uh, Ron was talking more about the no challenge rule set. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool, or interesting anyway, that there's a rule set you could play here called Void. And it's the same on other websites, that you just can't put down an invalid word. Like, if you try to submit an invalid word, it just gets rejected, and you're asked to play something else. And I suggested to the developers, hey, about this void thing, it does not feel the best that um, I could just play any combination of letters over and over without any consequence. Surely, like, 
some kind of five point penalty or something is um, also in order. Um, suggested that a couple times. I don't think they're interested in making Void into something competitive. I don't know. Maybe in some way it delegitimizes players' study and word knowledge, which I could kind of understand. But yeah, the site. And then I suggested a mode where it would tell you, here are some high-scoring words. Pick one. Kind of like how, well, not exactly. In auto chess, you just set up the army and it plays itself. Um, in Fortune Street, uh, you can tell AIs to play a certain way and they'll play out the game for you. And you'll get the credit for having played the game. Um, here what I was suggesting is much more mild. That just has something that suggests word options and allows the user to pick between them instead of, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess the problem there, though, is, like, what if a person cheats and uses an engine to evaluate the suggestions? Then you'd have to, like, throw in bogus suggestions from time to time or something else to throw, um, whatever cheating utility they're using to throw it off. All right, well, it's game time. Let's take a look. Nobody's cheating here. But that's, this will be exciting. Let's take a look from the beginning. Sorry, I didn't hear anything in the lobby. Didn't realize the game had actually started already. So um, yeah, let's take a look. So first place, flow. It gets rid of the F and the W, so that looks great to me. Oh, reinfuse. Jeez. I was trying to think of, like, how do you play the U? And even here, how do you play a U? Uh, here, I guess their priority is preventing bingos on the left half of the board. Although they're having to hold on to a U to prevent that. Yeah, and here we've got... Um, yeah, lots of parallel plays with this international dictionary. So... All right, and then the last play, most recent play, was an exchange. And we've caught up. Squared. So, yep, that hits the corner. Um, and also plays the cue. Um, So yeah, this new user style will highlight wherever the most recent move was played. Because I was having trouble finding it, honestly. Taglines. Nice. Um, so the N in column M is tilted. And that indicates not that the letter's tilted, but that this is a blank. Perhaps instead of taglines, something in column A might have been appropriate. I don't know. Column A play would have been riskier. Um, so if you want more risk, uh, scoring a bingo in column A is... Actually, there's two problems in column A. One, that the G could start a word. Two, that the G could end a word. So it's just a matter of who gets ING next. And... Um, yeah, that'll be exciting. Players should be looking to play lots of tiles, or exchange lots of tiles, in a hope of using the G or forcing the opponent to block column A and waste a turn. I don't know if FER accepts a hook at the end. I, well, N, it accepts an N. Um, even after exchanging four letters, there's still no bingo here. We're close to throwing, but we don't have an H. Yeah, so playing off high-scoring tiles maximizes the chance that in a future turn you'll be able to play seven or eight for a bingo. 
By that I mean play seven tiles to get a seven letter word or an eight letter word. Well, we've got a root for our number 10 seed, just to have the match be ex as exciting as possible. Uh, oh, the other thing I did not describe here is that the challenge rule here is not double. Here the challenge rule is 5 point. Meaning that if you make a challenge and your opponent's word is acceptable, they get a bonus five points. So if you're like less than 90 something percent sure that your opponent's play is good, go ahead and challenge it. It'll only cost five points. So, yeah, in my games, I've gotten into a habit of frequently issuing challenges because I just don't know which ones are valid and which ones aren't. There's just a ridiculous number of words in the book. Alright, that's a typo. I think they meant to put that over a column, not where it is. And so the question is, can you take advantage of it or do you challenge it? Because it's not the highest scoring play ever. So TT stands on the board. Okay. It is what it is. And time trouble, exciting things can happen. Tough break. Wow. Yeah, this is a really strong field, and sometimes uh, if there's a lock of letters, as in the shape from flow and fur and den and vow and hops, in that shape, it can be very difficult to find a legal placement of tiles. Things will get interesting when it comes time for... Um, my matches with these opponents. I'm hoping um, on this website to set a new high score in terms of uh, games won by me in a match, which currently stands at two. Um, the most games I've managed to win in any given match right now. Uh, I'd like to claim some of my word knowledge helped a little bit with that, but not much at all. Alright, next game begins. Uh, we're not playing first time, we're playing all nine games. Alright. Aneroid. Yeah, these I words, these I bingos, are things I need to study. I wonder if that's the only bingo, given those letters. A type of barometer. Alright, I wonder if that comes from Greek. Who knows? All right, it's just the one. So nigh uh, to draw near and why um, you'll see frequently get played in the international English direct dictionary. Uh, all right. 
yeah, we don't exactly have letters for falafel or anything like that, so fear um, preserves the lead. Um, oof. Lately I've taken to exchanging a lot more, but here meth might be playable. But yeah, um, you play that above aneroid. Um, is there anywhere else it would fit? Uh, that's the sort of thing... Uh, Reb is acceptable, right? If not, we'll see it get challenged. Um, but yeah, it never feels good to be in a position where you're not finding the parallel place and being forced to think of stuff. So how do we play the X? I've sorted the tiles from highest scoring to lowest scoring. Extol, of course. Yeah. That makes sense. Unless you have some way to score multiple words with the tile. But here, this is a triple letter score. So that makes a tremendous deal of sense. So the best I'm seeing here is just cake. Uh, but maybe that just means that I'm hungry. What letters can you put before ham? There's... Oh, it's not a ham. Alright, we've got chat. Nori, a type of seaweed. Also a common word because it ends in an I and has an O in it. Uh, gape. Yeah, it looks valid. We've almost got windows. Oh. Alright, so they're going to play across to the triple unless they find a seven. Now, the E in the bottom row still has my attention. So, I would be trying to build up a rack that could score the bingo down there. Um, or I guess you could block that spot, but then the upper right is still available. But there's not much you can score in it. And besides, the L, I, and K are still available in the center column. Um, the letter C in column F blocks column E from being used. Nice. Yeah, HM is one of those words I also forget about quite a bit. It's completely disregarded because it's so difficult. Uh, well, sorry, it's in US Scrabble, it's so uncommon to see consonants jammed together, including a Y. Jin is a genie. Tunic, we all know what that is. Yeah, playing the S at the end of a word tends to score quite a few points. On the other hand, 
Aneroid is not the highest scoring play to begin with. But playing this way makes it harder to use the double ward scores effectively. But if you can use them effectively, more power to you. Um, so if they had a word like having, that would fit beautifully here, but they don't have an H. So yeah, let's score this. Two S's. What do you do with two S's? Conventional wisdom says use at least one of them. It's not one of those letters that appreciates over time. Oh right, the timer. Oof, that's brutal yet again. But at least players are enjoying the moves. Or making each play. Um, wow, is there a bingo here? I'm not seeing it. Orated. The only thing I hate is when I uh, consume the E, even though there are so many Eves available in the bag. I'm just nervous that I might draw and not get a vowel at all. Closing the board, but no, oh, opening the rank with the R on it. Allowing an S hook, which is a bit risky. But if the S hook is taken, then uh, the corner could be at risk. So D, J, I, N jumps out. Um, I'm not sure where I'd even consider playing it. But um, Jade uses many of the similar letters and keeps an eye behind. The problem is there are so many eyes in the bag. And this kind of time we didn't get lucky. Yeah, I guess it makes more sense to burn a U than an I if you're trying to build a long word. The eye does handle duplication reasonably well. Alright, so June, if somebody had a K, that would be a lovely opportunity to use the K. That said, I see there's a blank in hand. Hmm, I wonder. We don't even block it. But, oh, well, okay. I guess this is the best we could score with the K. Fine. It is kind of hard to score. Nice. That scores the Z twice for a total of 33. Yeah, I'm still not seeing a bingo. Sevens and eights are just so hard to find. All right, so are we gonna see a bingo through the H? We don't have ing. There is no open i. Oh, nice. That's not easy to find at all. Thank you. 
Alright, so having played EED last turn, we no longer have EED. On the other hand, our opponent probably could have played EED if we didn't do it. I'm just suggesting that perhaps something in an ideal world where there's a lot of time to think, um, perhaps there could have been some other way to block the corner without giving up the ED. Maybe not. Maybe it's just doomed in any event. FY is also a nice find, and I continuously forget that it's a word. Uh, with 22 tiles remaining in the bag, it is possible to exchange tiles. Um, probably even reasonable to do so, unless you think you have something that's going to score well. Yeah, so this board looks relatively closed to me. I would maybe play one more play. Um, it's getting very difficult to play moves here. But I strongly consider exchanging sometime soon before the board opens up again. So I would consider exchanging YMPG. And just see wherever the bag takes us. Um... Yeah, like I said, the board is fairly closed, so you got time to do that. I think the T might have been nice to keep, because I think twad might be a word. Uh, is it? Well, we'll never know. Unless we use this. Alright. Yeah, so, uh, there's also a pattern form of this. So we can check out if there's something there. Spot. Oh, so an S would have fit there. It's good to know uh, which twos build out to threes, which threes build out to fours. Uh, that'll help you tremendously. Oh, and also which ones build out to twos. So, yeah, knowing your two, three, and four letter words that are extending. Um, well, one letter word's not the right explanation of it, but they're extending anything that could appear on a board. Knowing those extensions is valuable. Nice. On the triple letter score, scoring the Y twice. And Dorothy is back in the game. And with a H and a U and a B, I can't imagine there being a 7 or an 8 here. Certainly not one that plays through a V. I thought I almost saw something like home built. And if that were a word, that'd be amazing. It wouldn't have fit anyway. Exchange RR. Yeah, fair enough. I don't see anywhere to play the R. IU, I like that exchange. Well, that said, I'm a relatively newer player, so I don't like the letter I that much. Except in cases where it tremendously helps. Like here. Or basically anywhere you want to score a 7 or an 8, you want to have the letter I. Even more so than the letter E. So there's two bingos that both contain an I right in a row. Now, the biggest threat is the A column. So, what do we score in the A column? Maybe it's not possible. I mean, nothing else. I'd play the leftmost and rightmost tiles here. 
I don't know if anybody's watching, listening, whatever. But yeah, a uh, hop probably would have been reasonable to block the corner. If droop is valid, then that uh, it's 27 points. Oh, <laughs> setting yourself up for a hook. Very clever. Still risky to leave the P exposed, but, you know, I guess sometimes it's worth taking the risks. I'm trying to remember, did I have potentially a solid play at some point with the leading S? I thought in one of my games, um, after the game, it was recommended playing solid. Alright, we'll look up Droop. A fleshy fruit? I wonder what Drupal is. It's like a Linux something or other. I wonder if that all comes from the fruit etymology. Yep, I would. I like exchanging letters that I have difficulty playing. So yeah, I guess I'd recommend that AI UU exchange, all else being equal. Nice, well played. So is like POC a word? Palm? Yeah. Palm is much likelier than anything else. So where do you play the, any of your I's and the K? Or do you just continue exchanging? I guess you could do ilk. Ilk is playable, but I don't like it. Yeah, so we haven't found a place for the I and the K. The opponent's taking their time, finding a good move. Finding good moves puts pressure on the opponent, who is already in time trouble. Moving quickly does not put... I mean, it puts some mental pressure, but you really want the opponent to flag. Um, I don't know. I guess... Um, Wow, I still don't see a bingo here. That's unfortunate, but I'm not sure even if there were one that would play anywhere. There are just so many letters that are all on the same rank as other letters on the same rank. Alright, so this is building up. Um, although I don't think any, ta any T takes any prefix. Yeah, cheese here is a good play. And it would be very difficult to change the winner here. Nicely done. Yeah, completing a game is an achievement. Um... Week one, I was just glad to get my tiles down. But now that we're in week three, I wanted at least one win. Even if I felt a little bit dirty afterward. Uh, so the current match score for 4-0. Uh, for those keeping track at home. Yeah, I'm not saying a bingo. Irony. Oh, that's clever. And since iron takes other suffixes, it makes sense to play the Y immediately. That all said, because it's easier to find words that um, begin with a letter than words that end with a letter, I probably would have started uh, uh, with fewer points. 
scoring ivory as high up as possible. Oh yeah, you're welcome. If this is what I think it's about, and it's probably not, but if it is, yeah, you're certainly welcome. I'm not even sure what that's referring to, because uh, I've been updating lots of things recently. Play off one of our doubled W's. Um, yeah, all those plays, all three of those are valid words. So, oh, I was going to say, like, potentially maybe it's worth holding out to the Z for a little bit or playing ZHO. Or DZO or DZHO or one of those things, and there is a place to play ZHO, assuming it's valid. Oh, okay, yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, glad to provide that, because I couldn't remember. Yeah, so, so far, uh, the score is 4-0. Um, and all nine games get played, even if... Uh, a winner has been decided because tie breaks matter uh, in some cases. But also, it's good to just give players the experience. <laughs> yeah. If the board is very closed, that can be a good time to exchange letters or tiles. Yeah, there you go. Get some of those doubled constants off the rack. Yeah, today I had some success with um, uh, just exchanging tiles frequently. It was embarrassing. And there was one case where I had two blanks and I was in severe time pressure and could not find the bingo. And that happened several turns in a row. Then I got the cue, and I avoided a cue stick. Um, so I got to play the cue, but I had to burn both my blanks with like five seconds left. Um, I still got stuck with the X, but I thought it was the best I could manage at that time. Curio. Is that some Italian something or other? Curio. An unusual art object. And the plural form does accept an S. Quora. Unless there's better. But Quora scores 40 plus points. Unless there's a better. Oh. No! Sad. So sad. Did I just imagine? No, they did have a U. Yeah. Huh. Well, this could be a close game. Rumakis. Alright, let's go. Let's do this. See the reverse sweep, just to make things exciting. Quavered. Unfortunately for Ten Dots, unfortunately for Dorothy, the Quavered is valid. So yeah, this is back to being a close game again. An appetizer. A Japanese appetizer for marinated chicken liver and a water chestnut. Grilled in a rasher of bacon. Huh. I wonder how many good Japanese foods are also good Scrabble words. 
So we got the P and the H, but no O, so Q-O-P-H does not play. And there goes the P. Understandable, you have to block that spot. Um, wait, neither player has a U, so building across from the Q could be difficult. But one player will get to play QI, and then at their discretion, QIS. Um, so it seems. Seven tiles still in the bag. Pies. Yeah, I'm not seeing a better place to put that. So the X is going to go down some... Well, you could score it for like 16 points or so. Is there any colored square that the X could go on? Not that I'm seeing. I could almost play the word fiveless, if it's even a word. Yeah, you gotta be careful with this sort of play. If you're alternating consonant vowel, consonant vowel, they'll make it easier for your opponent to build a parallel play. Whereas if you're doing like flyers, I don't know if it's valid, but you just have to be careful. It's not easy. All right, let's go, let's go. Still close game. Both players are close to timing out. Opponent has zero tiles. And ten dots wins. All right, 4-1. That is 4-1 uh, in favor of Martin. We've got one vowel. Uh, if I remember right, I heard that the first play of the game is a good opportunity to exchange letters. Which to me did not make sense, because look at that pink tile in the center of the board. How could you possibly just leave that tile unclaimed? Well, the reason you can is that yeah, most of your opening plays will allow your opponent to do parallel plays, which score almost all of your letters anyway. So, uh, and then generally it's difficult to meet that with something equally powerful. So the first play of the game can be a good opportunity to exchange tiles. Nice. Yeah, it seems we have another player in the group who enjoys playing bingos. I'm not good at them, but boy, are they fun to play. Um, but yeah, I've pushed a number of updates to the word bot. Um, I have not figured out how to get it to announce its name when it enters a channel. Uh, so I don't have a way to have it say Wordsmith 0.1 by Daniel Barker every time it joins a channel. It can respond to messages, but it just can't spam its own identity. Um, maybe the thing I'm actually looking for is the ability to set like a status. Like in Discord, you can set a status for a bot. I wonder if it's possible to set an account status for a logged in account to just like credit the name, version, author, whatever of the bot. I'll have to look into that. I didn't see a way to do it, but maybe there's a way to do it. All right, there's a <laughs> nice balance of consonants and vowels and a blank tile. Soilers. Yeah, so watching these games gives me ideas of words that could be valid, or that almost certainly are valid. Oof, so we got a blank. 
but we're going to leave the L above the triple word score open. Oh, I've published it on GitHub. So anybody who looks for my name on GitHub, or who looks for Wordsmith, uh, or who looks for Daniel Barker's name, can eventually find their way over to my copy of this code. Yes, I like this. Um, I forget who it was in our Google's Discord. Wait, Matzo? Oh yeah, it does take an O. Uh... I remember being stumped about that a month ago. Matza takes an A, but also takes an O. But yeah, uh, somebody had suggested this, uh, took a screenshot of it, in, uh, shared that with uh, the Woogles Discord. And so I um, just now, right before this game, implemented this change in a user style. Um, and tinkered with the coloring quite a bit. I think it's not too obnoxious. Um, but yeah, there's a CSS category, I don't know, tag, that um, indicates the last played. And for that, you just need to change the background color. And then um, the ruin, the R-U-N-E, I'm not pronouncing that right, but on the ruin um, of the tile, you'd have to change the foreground color. And there you go. And I think this matches the coloring you'll see on the light theme, where all the squares are white and the tiles are purple. So I think that's where they got this purple color from. Um, yeah, I think it helps. I almost switched it on for my own game coverage. And then I thought, well, that'll just um, be too distracting to myself. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I like it. It's nice. All right, we got... <laughs> we had... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Martin's in time trouble. Um, they're all certainly going over time, uh, but they had W-E-E-K, but I didn't see anywhere to play it. Oh, W-E-A-K, though, would play at B6. Okay, no. No. <laughs> uh, Suling Habits is not valid. Nice try. That would have been some good number of points uh, if it were valid. Did anybody by chance get the point count on that one? I think that's a typo. I'm assuming that they were intending to play six tiles and they played seven. Um, or that there's some other explanation. I mean, one explanation could just be that they're short of time, they're panicking. Uh, it's I've panicked before. I've done some really dumb things. Um, but man, that would have been a high-scoring play. And a word for the ages. But it's hard for plays like that to go unnoticed. Alternatively, I mean, given the game score, that could be a legitimate attempt. Not saying that, like, it's ever going to work. It really won't. Like, moves like that, or plays like that, even in time pressure, do get spotted. Um, yeah. So it's a strategy, but I would just never, ever expect that to work. But rules are rules, so play within, I mean, play nice, but play within the context of the rules, and if you're trying to win the match, if you're down by, um, in a game by 150 points, I can't exactly fault a player for 
um, in time pressure, making some regrettable play. Um, all right. So Martin's got five. Dorothy's got one. And we've got, uh, if I can do the math, uh, three games remaining, starting now. Uh, we have quota if we wanted. We'd have to give up the blank. But getting the Q... Oh, I'm sorry. QAT is oh. also a very good play. Yeah. 40 points for quota might not be worth burning the blank over. Now, for keeping the blank, you very much want to play a bingo later. So, yep, play the M. This is good. I've been told that the I is good for building long words. Um, we do not have Bitcoin, unfortunately. Um, hmm. Wait, there's not an open G. There's not an IER. Hmm. Yes. Because opponents tend to like to close the board or play like C into a column that makes it difficult to use, um, I probably would have opened um, burning the blank, but... Um, I think this is just unfortunate that Crony contains an O and not something that could help a bingo occur. Yeah. Alright, we have duplicated O and duplicated N. So this closes more lanes out of concern that the opponent could have a 7 now. Or an 8. In this case, that happens to be untrue, but it could have been the case. And this would have been a reasonable play to close uh, the D column there. And possibly close some plays that would go through the E. Oh, Bitcoin's not even in CSW? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a proper name, isn't it? Yeah, that's unfortunate. Wait, what? Oh. Wait, what? Oh my goodness. Huh. Okay, that works. But surely there was some valid play involving an S there. I just assumed that the play were valid, but yeah. It's worth challenging things you're not sure of. In that case, that was not valid. So that's a swing. That is a big swing. Oh, well, oh, it's in NWL. All right, well, let's check it out. I've got the CSW dictionary installed here, I think. Um, okay. I'm still puzzled why it's valid, but given that it is a proper name, but it's just so popular. Urier. There's a fun one to play. What was the definition of this one again? Dingy. Lerve? What? Okay, you getting educated today. What is this Lerve? Romantic love. Uh. 
All right, so there's two W's, a U, uh, doubled E's. This does play one of the W's, which is good. All right, we're in overtime. Yeah, the V does not help in terms of coming up with a very long word here. Vlay. There's an excellent play. It's one of those words that you don't commonly use outside of the game. Let's check it out. A low-lying ground where a shallow lake forms in the wet season. All right, and we're in the end game here. PLN, such as plan, but there's not very many open vowels here. Yep, op is valid for operation. Oh, oh no, WIIR does not play very well either. We're going to see a sequence of turns played here. Azon is played instead of Chin, and Fur is played, and Lee, the unit of distance, is played. And that concludes that game. So that takes us to 6 and 1. Uh, again, there will be nine games in total. We have a Q. Delightful. Oh, well, that's a valid play, and it does give you five opportunities to draw something, uh, which could maybe be an A or an I or a U. Okay, this blocks Q, Q I, N. Oh! Very nice. That's, yeah. So we've seen three strong plays in a row here. I mean, you can never guarantee you're just going to draw an I and an S like that, but um, this is the right way to exploit it if you do draw that. So some, the opponent's going to want to play QI and something else. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, absent a bingo, that's the right thing to do. It's not easy to find, uh, you're looking for something through the C or the O of colon, if you're going to find something here. This is the curse of having the blank, is that, um, just, you have a lot of things to consider. Also possible is just KG. I mean, yes, you could concern yourself with the triple triple lane and probably should. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the more I think about it, that's actually the right play here. Although it means we're probably not going to get a bingo now. But yeah, the fact that the F going in column L um, exposed both triple word scores means that that was a risky play to play Felon.
Huh. Okay, what does this mean? Yeah, how do you play the double B or the Y? You don't have a U for grubby, and even if you did, it wouldn't fit anywhere. You could play Eb. Oh, Gib, or Big. Or rather, Big is playable. It's, I think, J-I-B instead of G-I-B if you're, I don't know. I need to learn these words again. I'm not so sure about this one. I'm not so sure about this one. All right, so UG is playable. It's a shortened form of UGH. Vuln is short for vulnerability. This does take the triple word score. And do we know an eight letter word starting with an R? Probably not. Because we have a G, so. Okay. <laughs> um. We're going to ignore that lane because it's unlikely to draw an eight. Huh. All right. Now, if the player had an S, this would be a good time to have an S. We're using the blank as an S out of fear that the opponent might have an S. Um, also because E just scores something, and there's time pressure involved. Yeah, I know this feeling of like, what the hell can I even play here? I see Mew and Ma and Ab. Don't really see much else. Oh, there's Mar. Oh yeah, I guess Emo. <laughs> there you go. You're lost if you don't challenge it, although it's almost certainly valid. Yeah. Dang. That's brutal. Uh Time pressure makes fools of us all. So that sets the score 7 1. Time for game 9. So, in my mind, I would play Flay as high as possible. Uh, Flan is playable, holding on to the Y. Um, I would play it as high as possible to maximize the chance of bingos happening. Because players are good at detecting words that start with a letter, not necessarily as good at finding words that end with a letter. Also, if an opponent has a K, oof, I mean, they're not going to have it, but... Hmm, interesting. Maybe that was the reason Flan got played. Just to encourage um, that, like, probably the opponent doesn't have a K, but they need to be concerned that I might have one. Uh, so they have to play a blocking move. I don't know. It's interesting. All right, the closed game begins and immediately ends. Assuming this is playable, I don't see a challenge. I don't hear a challenge. Huh. Okay, what's it mean? What's the word we're going to learn right now? I see. All right, well.
I mean, it was a low stakes enough play in terms of it didn't score a lot. So maybe that contributed to it staying on the board. Uh, oof. Oh boy. Uh, so this opens the L to the triple. Also opens a hook at the beginning. Which is completely ignored in favor of this opening the triple triple thing. Hmm. And instead of flop, we're going to play uh, three parallel play here, so... Okay, that's sensible enough. But, um, yeah, they're fortunate that the corner could not be claimed with... Well, L1 could not be a consonant. They had to be a one-point tile, so the corner is not the worst thing ever. Uh, Oyer. Okay. Yes. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm missing um, what you mean by layout better, but yeah. Uh, after my first... <laughs> uh, uh, physics is having some good fun with squiggles. Um, I did have a little chuckle at that, but um, nice. The only downside of that is it doesn't score a lot, and it opens uh, the O column. Uh, but yeah, after my first game or first match, it dawned on me I really need to be challenging a lot more, and I did a lot more challenging in my second match, and almost all of my challenges were wrong and embarrassingly so, but I still needed to do it. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Instead of payout, layout? Huh. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, because generally sticking the P there is somewhat risky, being that it's, I think, a three-point tile. So if your opponent hits a triple, that's already, you're giving him nine points. Um... But also, using a triple is worth points, too. Uh, I don't know how easy it is for, like, if the O column and N columns are completely empty, and a player builds across, like, L8, M8, N8, O8, uh, if they have that kind of build across, I wonder how easy it is from 08 to hit either corner based on what the letter on the 08 square is. Um, it probably varies greatly depending on what the opponent's holding on to. But in my mind, like, uh, there's quite a few tiles I would not want to see laying completely bare on 08. Uh, especially consonants. Or rather, especially word ending valid consonants. Uh, I'd be concerned about leaving on 08. Because then the opponent might hit either the 01 or 015 corner. Alright, so we got an X. We gotta play the X somehow, some win, some Y. Um, we know why. It's not a really good place for it right now. Hmm. Oh, I stand corrected. All right, well, well played to both players. Blitz is rough. It's exhausting. It really is. Um, all right, so between this stream and the one I did before it, I've been speaking for multiple hours today. Probably done speaking for today, so I think that means we're wrapping up.
unfortunately. Um, oh yeah, I'm sorry, Podia. Right. I don't know why I was thinking uh, would you pronounce it any other way. That's cool. But yeah, like we were wrapping it up here. Um, so, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we'll probably be back later this week, if all goes well. And it might not, but if all goes well, we'll probably be back later this week. So, thanks for watching, and have a good day.